I am not playing in this one, but um, it looks like the finals of the MSO are going to be on Fjords. And we've got George Shortwell, Hephaestus, Sora 13, and Hugh Kim um, playing in this one. Um, just waiting for the game to start, it looks like. Looks like that game might have started. Um, let's see. Here we go. Okay. Um, hopefully this stream looks okay. I'm just gonna verify that everything looks fine here. Yeah, I think it looks okay, right? Um, we can probably try to change the layout a little bit um, so that we can see everyone's favorite tiles and stuff once the game gets going. Um, but for now, I think this is okay. Um, yeah, we'll be able to like resize stuff. You guys can comment to see whether or not it's good. Um, on this computer, I have yet to create a format, so whatever format goes here um, can be changed for my uh, my personal stream games as well. I can probably uh, make myself smaller here. Yeah, we don't need to be so big for this finals. Um, after all, I'm just a spectator here, right? So, um, all right, so no faction has been picked yet, but we're on the Fjords map, which is the best map. Um, we've got three scoring pass tiles in the game. We're missing the dwelling scoring pass tile, but the big building, the TP, and, um, this ship one is in. Worker power is not in the game, so... Um, that's a little sad for a faction like Engineers, who love to get that double dig and extra worker for an econ boost. And what else are we short here? We've got the coins tiles in the game. We're short the priest. Um, so um, a priest power action around one can be strong for someone who has an air step natively. Um, We've got dwarves picked into the first seat, um, which is, I mean, there's two ship tiles in this game. Um, so that's a little awkward for dwarves. However, Fjords is a very nice map for dwarves, so they should fare okay here, um, depending on the color wheel. There's also a lot of air workers, so I think that this is a very good game um, for dwarves to try to get a priest onto the air cult early. I think that if, if like darklings don't get put in and like be a jerk and just put a priest onto air with their first move and it is an it is alchemist so um i think that a cool line for dwarves could be you start on this guy um it seems pretty likely that you can end up that you can start on this buy with your first action send air and then use the cult bump to get yourself up to the fourth step on air um and then from there you have a cult spade coming in um and then you do normal dwarf stuff after that um, I think that line could be pretty fun. Um, we got nomads in the third seat. Um, nomads are a strong, versatile faction. George Orwell has played nomads in both of his previous games. Um, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be good here. Bulky. Priest to air plus water to dwarves. Actually, a good way to get the air spade is dwarves, or are you better off taking air to them? Um, so, my thought about water to, I mean, I know that you love water to, but my thought is that, like, you're probably getting this pass tile anyway. Um, so, 
if you're getting the cult bump anyway, you don't need to take water two just to get that spade. Water two would really be just getting you this spade. So I feel like earth two or earth one is probably just better here. Um, that's that's just my my suspicion, but I could be wrong. I have been known to be wrong. In fact, I was very wrong about both my games. So. Yeah, cult coins is better, um, unfortunately. So the question is, will, would alchemists take cult coins? And I think the answer is no, right? Alchemists are probably going to get offered temp ship, and certainly temp ship has to be better than uh, than cult coins for alchemists because they're going to start G8. Um, they can build I8 and possibly C5 to A6 for free in round one. That seems like it has to be better. Um, okay, it's witches. That obviously makes dwarves' life, life a fair amount worse. Um, it's witches with an air spade in round one. That often says that I want to open temple air two for witches, um, which means that they might give up the stronghold tile. I really like nomads if they get the stronghold tile. And indeed, um, Hugh can seize that. <laughs> Round three towns also indicate that you want a stronghold nomads game. Um, so I think that we could very well be looking at um, stronghold for nomads. So I'm thinking it might go spade for witches. Um, spade is just generically strong for witches. Um, opening with air two. Um, though they don't have a, awkwardly, they don't have a really great place to put their cult spade. Um, Assuming that they dig this with their, like, could it be like you dig H6 to gray or something with your cult spade? I, I actually, I actually am not really seeing like the huge benefit of getting this spade off the air cult as insane as that seems for witches. Like the big benefit is that there's a double air cult reward later um, and that you get priest production for this. But I don't think it would be the end of the world if you took the big building tile instead and you just said, F it, I'm going to open stronghold. Um, you start on F5, F8, and then you just secure, like, maybe F3. Um, so yesterday I played a game against Terra Steel where... I forget if dwarves were... No, dwarves weren't in the game, but black and yellow were in the game. I, I was Chaos Magician, and I got blown the fuck out. But um, this E4 hex is kind of interesting when you're facing potential stronghold nomads. Um, because witches definitely want this e4 hex um, if they fly to f3 and then they can like go for town shenanigans here or even down through i mean as dwarves are in the game so you're not going to get g4 but you could go for some towns through here um, this is just good adjacency and it's like good for getting network through here but i guess in this game with chaos magicians not in the game E4 is less key for nomads, so that actually makes witches better. Like, you have a good chance at actually getting F3. Though, of course, that also relies on dwarves letting you have it. Um, heroic logic, yes, we're in the finals, and of course, I'm happy to stream if I have the time, so... Um, right now, it looks like I do. If I run out of time, then, you know, maybe someone else can get a stream going and they can catch the rest of it. Um, Uh, so like I was saying, I think that witches kind of have some issues if you want to go for like, if you want to take full advantage of witches stuff, you're going to run into some awkwardness because dwarves are preventing you from using your cult spades in the perfect way. Um, also, I don't know about alchemists being left as the 40 faction. I don't know if they're worse than witches here. Um, alchemists are going to open with the temp ship, so they're, they can... If they avoid G5, which they don't have to, they can start G5 and single spade this. Like, I could see a very strong alchemist opening just being temple for earth one, single spade G6, then use temp ship to get onto I8. And then you pass on to like the, this guy here. Um, and you try to rapidly advance your shipping in round two to get out here. Um, Alternatively, you could even try to open double temple or something. 
are outs that bad here that witches and dwarves are better? So the thing is, I don't think witches or dwarves are bad here. However, I do think alchemists could be very strong. Like look at the past tiles. Three, three good past tiles are in the game for alchemists. Um, now it is, it's, it is kind of a coin rich game, which means that other factions can have decent games, but like alchemists passing out of six coins is just six victory points too. So like they have a bunch of stuff going for them. So yeah, you're not the only one thinking that alchemists don't necessarily, aren't necessarily the worst faction here. Um, but this is like a cool statement of intent. I do think nomads kind of, like when you just look at how round one is likely to go, I think nomads are a good pick for this spot. Um, but you could get like, so there's always something weird that can happen in round one. And in this game, I think that that weird thing is the fact that we don't know who's getting double dig in round one. Um, it could be Alchemist, which would be a swing. We don't know, like, there are a lot of hexes here that could really swing the game. For example, if Alchemists get F7 in round one, then they're likely to get a three hex town here. That's pretty cool. They don't need a bridge. That's one extra town for them. Um, G6 might be wanted by both witches or i mean alchemists want g6 to connect i like being here um as alchemists and getting g6 if alchemists manage to somehow open get the double spade and like they get these two hexes um in round one that's pretty big um we don't know if alchemists get or not g6 g7 but rather f7 so if they get g6 and f7 these are two hexes that are pretty contested um h4 might be contested hex um we don't know how much nomads will value that um like the thing about nomads is that they're always in like a weird spot here where they're going to control the game but they can only sandstorm once per round um, and they need to focus on their own stuff as well so if you do start like on these two hexes here and you're kind of squeezing alchemists and you might take away H4 from alchemists, are you giving up too much of your own stuff? For example, like dwarves, if they get the double spade, might target D4 and then try to go for a town up through the, these hexes here. Um, sandstorming D4 is very lucrative for nomads, especially with this round three town, because it's one of the ways that you can access a free, like quote, free yellow. So um bulky you're talking about you guys are talking about uh, alchemists on this map yes alchemists are very good on this map because of the three ship shenanigans that you're able to do um there's more action on witches than there is on dwarves which i mean that could be correct but again i still see like a pretty strong dwarves game possible the question is can you get cult can you get a town early enough to try to get the two key town or to try to try to like lock up cults and stuff? Um, the way I see it is that dwarves, if they can get a good cult game going and they can get this and this reward, um but they're gonna be pretty happy <laughs> there's like a small question of are witches are in f3 or f5 um f3 is obviously good because of boxes in dwarves um Dwarves, without the landscape, they're going to have a tough time trying to connect through here. However, if you are on here, then you do risk someone doing something goofy and taking away F5. Um, you need the stronghold in order to get here fast. Um, but if you do start F5, then you have to imagine that you're losing F3 as well. Um, If you do start F3, you're very likely to get a town through these hexes here, D1, E4, F3, right? Like, it's a very nice three hex town, though you might want fire too if you don't have a stronghold going um, and you don't want to build that expensive TP, but it's not the end of the world to build a stronghold as witches. It's like one of the best economic structures in the game, so. So yeah, I think that 
in round one, I'm looking for two things. One of those things, or three things, right? One of them is where do nomads want to put their um, sandstorm if that happens? Two is what, well, okay, let's let's double back. Um, put it in this order. First of all, what is Witch's game plan? Are they going for the stronghold tile or are they going for the spade plus a likely temple for air two? The second thing that's a big question is who's going to get the double spade? If dwarves go for the priest to air line, then they're going to take themselves out of that race. But dwarves could fight for the double spade by taking a power tile and just upgrading. Um, or they could just try to get the double spade just by upgrading anyway. Um, third is uh, are nomads, if nomads get the sandstorm, where is that sandstorm going to go? Who's going to get targeted by them? I think those are all pretty interesting questions. Um, which is how, like, which is kind of how, like, the first first big decision to make, which is their starting spots, right? They're always starting F8. This is like a, as Super would say, this is an S tier hex. Um, I think that F5 is a little safer. However, no, it is the most common.